Thanks for joining, Aiden. We're going to wait a couple minutes, see if anybody else joins, and then we're going to go to the presentation. Recording in progress. All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks for joining us today. The first of two uh, online open houses for the LTD system review. My name is Jeremy Card. I'm a planner with LTD. I've been here 18 years. I'm the project manager on this project. Today, we're going to be going through the draft recommendations that the our consultant, Nelson Nygaard, has developed um, over the last six or seven months. We've done a lot of outreach. We've got a lot of feedback. Um, so now we're presenting these uh, recommendations to the public, try to get more comment. Um, so I'd like to, at this time, introduce Thomas Whitman with Nelson Nygaard. He's going to lead us through a presentation. If you have questions during, we can use the Q&A uh, panel at the button, and uh, I'll be monitoring those questions as we go through. Uh, feel free to interrupt if you'd like. Go ahead, Thomas. Great. Thank you so much. And again, you know, just uh, feel free as a part of the Zoom, if you, you know, scroll over and hold over the uh, the screen, the pop up for the the bar below should have a Q and A function, and that is you know where we be looking at monitoring this. I want to th start off by saying what are we going to talk about today? You know, just a little bit about the background of how we got here, but focus mostly on the service scenarios and the potential recommendations that are coming out of this. And then let's lastly talk about like you know what are some things that you can do. You might have some questions right now, but what are what are also some materials that we could look at later on as a part of this, or you can share with your friends about, you know, this, you know, the system review. So why don't we start off by saying, like, why are we doing this? And there's a couple of different reasons why taking a closer look at where and when LTD buses, you know, operate, you know, is, is something that should be asked. First of all, the pandemic has fundamentally changed how people and when people and where people travel to and from. And so one of the key questions is, does the LTD service design, the service that is out there right now, does it match up with that adjusted travel pattern? One of the other things is that, again, as a result of the, the pandemic, is that the number of operators as well as maintenance staff is not what it used to be. And, you know, we don't have as much staff as we did in 2019, and therefore service levels were reduced. And, you know, right now we're operating about at 90% of pre-pandemic service levels. And so this process is really a way to show, you know, to show a roadmap for what do we do with that extra 10% of service hours there? And how do we build back in a way that reflects the changed travel market. We didn't do this in a vacuum. So we looked at a series of different elements to help you know, us understand where people are traveling to and from, what existing customers in the LTD are doing, and what some of the requests were from the community as well as from existing customers 
to help us understand what those travel patterns might look like. And as a part of that, we looked at the ridership and connections for every single route. We looked at location-based service, you know, which is in essence cell phone data to help us understand how many people are traveling to and from any given area within the Eugene Springfield urbanized area, as well as some of the rural areas outside to help, again, help us understand, does the service network match what those travel patterns might look like? We also looked at where some of the higher need neighborhoods are, or some, you know, where, where folks with uh, greater propensity to ride are, and, you know, where the job growth as well as population growth is anticipated to happen. Last, we held a series of workshops, virtual open houses, uh, you know, um, you know, held focus groups, as well as, you know, talked with customers about what some of their potential needs were. You know, what would they like to see as a part of this if we could make adjustments to LTD services? So we took all of those materials and we looked at crafting a service plan that begin that that begins to address these various different things. And so I wanna switch gears from talking about, you know, what we looked at to what are we going to do about this and what do we see as a path forward for LTD? So there's a key series of key performance metrics or things that, you know, guide, guided us as a part of our recommendation development process. One of them was to address one of the biggest things that we heard as a part of our initial outreach effort, which was to improve route frequency. And some of the other things we saw as we looked at the network was we had saw opportunities to reduce route duplication, but also increase weekend service and look at making service adjustments that serve some of those areas where growth is happening, where they might not have been something five years ago, but there is either residential growth or commercial growth that you know, suggests that this will be a, you know, a good ridership market for LTD. This is not, I want to be clear, this, the system review process is not intended to blow the system up and start off from new, but instead it's designed to build upon the strengths of the existing service and look at where can we augment those strengths with service that truly meets the mobility needs of the community. So I want to, I want to touch base on some of the recommendations, and we've divided this into both short-term recommendations and longer-term recommendations, where the short-term recommendations are those that typically, typically can be made with today's operator numbers and, and today's maintenance staff numbers. And so these are, you know, these are thoughts and concepts that can be made that do not require additional buses, operating hours, or operators. And you know, in some, you know, this is one of the things that, that as additional operators become available and more operators graduate from the training classes, we could shift some of the longer term recommendations into the shorter term recommendations. But this is really the step that we wanted to do in a operator neutral manner. So what are some of those short term recommendations? The top recommendation undoubtedly is to restore service levels on the MX and Route 11, so to restore the frequency to every 10 minutes during large parts of weekdays. This has been one of the, one of the service reductions that has happened as a result of staffing shortages. And so restoring this specific thing is the top priority. Routes, the MX and Route 11, are the top producing routes and uh, carry the most riders by far of any other LTD routes. So improving this frequency will lead to a restoration and you know, of LTD's ridership, as well as improved connections to virtually every other route. Almost every route has connections to the MX or Route 11. So improving this frequency is super important. The, the second big short-term recommendation priority is to improve the number of corridors with service every 15 minutes or better. Why is this important? Market research, as well as you know, what, what's happening at LTD right now, has shown that a bus that comes every 15 minutes 
does not require a schedule for a potential passenger to use. It improves the number of potential uh, connections that can be made at Eugene Station as well, and to some extent at uh, Springfield Station as well. You know, so bus every 15 minutes, you know, allows for better utilization of all the bays at Eugene Station as well. So we saw three different corridors where improving service to every 15 minutes was a potential. The first one was between Eugene Station and Santa Clara Station on River Road, where the recommendation is to operate routes 51 and 52 on the same alignment and offset by every 15 minutes. You know, right now these routes, you know, travel from River Road to downtown Eugene on different alignments. So be consolidating that alignment via the Route 52 alignment. And then we'd be looking at making an adjustment to Route 40 to operate on the Route 51 alignment between downtown Eugene and River Road. And so this allows for a bus every 15 minutes between Santa Clara Station and Eugene Station to serve this higher need as well as growing area. Likewise, we'd be looking at uh, making adjustments to the schedule of Route 12 uh, that operates on Coburg Road, you know, um, you know, and in some cases duplicates, you know, Route 67 and 66. You know, so rather than arriving on the hour and on the half hour, Route 11, Route 12 would uh, arrive at Eugene Station and leave Eugene Station on the 15 and 45 past the hour and complement the 67 and 66 uh, schedules, you know, on Coburg Road, you know, allowing for large parts of the day to have the bus every 15 minutes along this corridor. And last, you know, the third corridor that we saw was between 30th and Hilliard and downtown Eugene and Uni the University of Oregon, um, where we have two different routes, the 28 as well as the 81, that run almost the identical alignment between 30th and Hilliard and Eugene Station, and instead run one consistent alignment where, you, where the Route 28 alignment operates identically to the Route 81 alignment, and we use this and we offset the schedule by every 15 minutes. So we get this high frequency service that provides a, you know, service from the residential areas 30th and Hilliard, all the way to U of O, and then into downtown Eugene as well. This provides greater convenience, greater connectivity, and allows for better transfers for those that do not have a destination at Eugene Station or a U of O. From a, the, 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 there's a, that summarizes the short-term recommendations. From a longer-term recommendation perspective, and these would allow for additional operators and additional buses over and above what is operated today. And the goal is really to meet the pre-pandemic service level. So if you, if LTD was operating, you know, uh, 600,000, you know, 700,000 hours of service in 2019 to match that number of hours of service that is operated in the future. So we recognize that what you're going to see today is not something we can just snap our fingers and create overnight. It's going to require additional operators and we're going to need time in order to do that. And so it's going to be a phased implementation. And that phasing is going to depend on, from a prioritization perspective, on two different things. What we hear back from you in terms of what the top priorities are, as well as when we're going to get those operators in. So what are some of those long-term recommendations? It's to improve frequency when additional operators become available. And this could include route, you know, uh, corridors and routes like uh, route, you know, route 36 or 24 or 40. So these are all uh, examples of what that might be. We'd also be looking at you know, expanding the number of high frequency corridors. Again, service that comes every 15 minutes there's three different additional corridors, which is West 18th, MLK and Centennial, as well as Highway 99, that show the, the ability to serve additional riders if the frequency were higher. 
We're also looking at improving downtown circulation in downtown Eugene with adjustments to either a the Route 1 or looking at a brand new downtown circulator and improving, you know, one of the key things we heard during, during some of our outreach, specifically with some of the Hispanic communities, uh, was better rural service, more frequently rural service, or additional trips on rural service. In addition, we also understand that there's demand for service in areas that are difficult for a full-size bus to access. So we're working together right now with local partners to create a mobility, mobility management framework that looks at how to connect some of these lower density areas, some of these areas where a 40 foot bus might have difficulty traveling into some of the streets. What are some of the options for communities like that? Well, we know there's a need, yet the 40 foot you know, bus is not necessarily the right solution. The last piece on the long-term recommendations is understanding that it's not just about where the buses go and when the buses go, but capital improvements to ensure that customers have a safe and inviting waiting area, that buses can get to their destinations in a speed, you know, in a safe and reliable way. And that we look at the operations of some of the existing stations to say, can we do better? Can we move vehicles in and out of here more effectively and more quickly so that our customers have a quicker, safer, more reliable ride? I want to, you know, walk through a, a a couple of illustrations of what the improvements in the frequent transit network might look like. You know, this is where service goes today in terms of frequent you know, transit, you know, service that comes every 15 minutes or better on weekdays. And this, in essence, is just the alignments of the MX as well as the Route 11 going out to Springfield. And so if we were to implement the short term recommendations, it would mean that we would have additional frequent service from Santa Clara Station all the way to downtown Eugene via River Road, uh, from Coburg and Harlow into downtown you know, Eugene, as well as from 18th and Hilliard, I mean, pardon me, 30th and Hilliard, all the way to U of O, as well as downtown. If we were to look at what the next step of this is, and this is one of the things that is outlined in the longer term recommendations as reflected by the purple lines on this map, is there's three additional corridors where higher frequency service can be supported by the land uses out there, as well as the growth that is happening out there. And this includes the MLK Centennial Corridor, um, the West 18th Corridor, as well as the SR 99 Corridor as well. I want to summarize, you know, that, you know, this is in much of the improvements that we're looking here at here involve improving the frequency of service. And in the short term, and some of these do require more operators than we have today, uh, we'd be looking at frequency improvements of the MX, Route 11, 24, 28, 36, and 81. And, you know, these, you know, with the 81 improvements, you know, this is, which is service to LCC, um, you know, would be offset by some reductions and frequency on Route 82, which also serves LCC. You know, regular service to LCC throughout the day will be maintained, you know, with these recommendations. In the long term, a series of additional routes, you know, sometimes they're similar routes, would also have additional frequency and they're listed on screen right here. And I think one of the key things here to note too is that with additional operators, we can look at improving frequency on our core routes, on our secondary routes, as well as our rural routes. I want to pause right here and say, are there any questions, you know, that we can go through some of the individual route by route recommendations, but I uh, wanted to pause here and see if there's any questions or comments on a specific route that you'd like to us to focus in on. And for that, you know, there's, you know, if you if you do have any comments, uh, please, uh, you know, look at the Q and A function in Zoom, and uh, we'd be more than happy to take that comment. Looks like we're okay right now, so let's go ahead and move move forward. All right.
I'm going to walk through each one of the individual route recommendations and we'll start off with some of the short term recommendations. And the first one is Route 24. Route 24, you know, is a route, a north south route extending from uh, downtown Eugene, you know, going further south. And there's two recommendations for this. Both are intended to improve the speed and reliability of these routes and to uh, improve route directness, you know, give our customers a faster trip. Uh, between their origins and destinations. And uh, the two recommendations are to use Willamette Street between Eugene Station and 20th Avenue instead of Oak to improve travel times. And the second one is to remove the 34th and Pearl Street deviation to improve travel times. You know, both of these may require several people to walk a block to continue to access service but the vast majority of our customers will have a faster ride to and from Eugene Station as a result of these recommendations. For Route 28, we'd be looking at changing the alignment between U of O and Hilliard so that the alignment is consistent with Route 81. This means no longer traveling on 15th and Alder, and instead using West 11, pardon me, East 11th and Patterson uh, to, you know, to, much like Route 81 does, to serve the university. The, you know, the, the U of O station stop that is southbound, you know, would be, you know, would no longer have service with the Route 28. And instead, this bus would stop on the northbound U, you know, U of O station, again, just like Route, you know, um, 81. This would cause a consistent alignment. Currently, there's buses routes you know, during certain times of the day. Routes 81 and 28 are traveling back to back between 30th and Hilliard and downtown. And this would allow us to change the schedule of Route 81 to run offset by 15 minutes from Route 28 and provide greater frequency along this corridor. One of the things we also saw as a part of this was you know, residential growth happening in areas that were still open fields, green fields, you know, five years ago. And so in an effort to serve some new multifamily housing, we are looking at extending Route 36 all the way to Willow Creek Road and operate Route 36 as a one-way loop that comes from West 18th to Willow Creek up to West 11th and, uh, you know, stopping at the, at the, um, you know, at the Willow Creek Station, and then extending back to, you know, and returning to downtown Eugene that way. All existing passengers would have service, you know, still with an easy walk of it, but it would also serve more jobs and more multifamily housing, specifically, you know, uh, by the West 18th uh, Willow Creek intersection. One of the other short-term changes, you know, adjustments to the routes we'd be looking at is to use Bertelson between West 11th and Royal Avenue instead of Denebo. This would allow us to serve, you know, more passengers, more customers, and, you know, more potential users due to the greater density along the, those alignments. We're not seeing a whole lot of ridership on Denebo. And, you know, that's, you know, one of the reasons to look at, you know, what can we look differently and yet still maintain service to our existing customers and potentially expand ridership on this. One of the other things that's currently in the schedule is, uh, you know, for several trips, a deviation to Green Hill, and we'd be not looking at restoring this due to the low ridership and the out of direction travel and the travel time it adds to our existing customers to serve that deviation. We're not picking up, or in this, historically, we have not picked up enough people to warrant this deviation. So we're recommending not bringing it back. I talked about this a little bit about, you know, some of the short-term changes to routes 40 and 51. And with the key, you know, why would we be looking at this? It's to operate routes 51 and 52 on a consistent alignment from River Road to downtown Eugene using the route 51, 52's alignment. So the 51 and 52 would come from Sarah, Santa Clara Station, travel down River Road to Second Avenue, and come into downtown Eugene along Fifth Avenue. And you know, so one of the, you know, one of the you know, one of the changes we'd be looking at is that 
Route 40, which currently goes along that second avenue and fifth avenue with the sixth, you know, pair, would instead be realigned to serve Washington Street, West Third, Shelton McMurphy, East Fourth, and Pearl and High. So in essence, the Route 40 walk 40 path into downtown would be swapped with the Route 51 path into downtown so that almost all riders would continue to have service. But more importantly, that folks in the Blair neighborhood, folks along River Road, would have service every 15 minutes throughout the day and on weekends have service every 30 minutes throughout the day. And this is a huge increase in mobility for some of these neighborhoods, which have, you know, have high needs and high utilization as well. One of the small changes for Route 52 is that during that during peak times, you know, right now there's a you know, service, um, you know, that there's a left turn on Irving Road that is difficult to make, and we'll be looking at rerouting service onto Calia, Cala Street and Calmia Street to be able to take a left turn onto Irving from Calmia Street onto Irving, you know, onto Irving Road. This will improve speed and reliability of this service and allow for a safer environment you know, for buses to make a left turn on a street that has gotten busier and busier as growth has happened in this part of Eugene. One of the other short-term changes is Route 93, which is service from Venita you know, to, you know, to right now the Willow Creek area. And so you know, this has shown you know, that the, one of the impacts when this was shortened to, as a result of the West MX extension was that ridership dropped dramatically for this. And this is the only rural route that does not have a destination in downtown uh, in, at Eugene Station. And so we'd be looking at restoring direct access to Eugene Station with Route 93 and do so in a way so that all existing stops would you know, continue to be served with the exception of the deviation up Bertelson, First Avenue and Seneca. And instead, you know, have every trip, you know, extend into downtown Eugene. These, you know, in order to not compete with the MX, we would be looking at making these stops between, you know, Seneca Station and Eugene Station so that there are pickups only in the westbound direction and drop-offs only in the eastbound direction. This allows folks from Benita and some of the outlying areas to have a quicker and easier access to regional services and local services throughout the Springfield Eugene area. One of the final short-term changes is Route 98. Uh, and this uh, provides service from Cottage Grove you know, to downtown Eugene. And as a, one of these recommendations is to operate every trip via LCC to provide better access and to improve, you know, reduce some of the potential confusion where some trips go to LCC, but not all trips go to LCC. And by making this consistent, we feel like we're going to attract more riders and have them understand that this is an option for them. One of the other elements is that in Cottage Grove, the Walmart, you know, is one of the biggest destinations, yet it's only available and accessible for Walmart, Cottage Grove residents in one direction. So be looking at modifying Route 98 to provide bi-directional service from the Walmart in Cottage Grove to the remainder of the residential areas. And we will also be looking at using 4th Street between Goshen Divide Highway and Taylor Avenue to provide a slightly faster trip you know, for some of our existing customers. We believe that these improvements will add a destination for Route 98 riders, actually add two destinations for Route 98 riders and provide greater you know, ways for folks that live uh, you know, out here in, this, in Cottage Grove to access shopping and educational opportunities. I'm gonna change gears right now and talk a little bit about some of the longer term recommendations and what some, what some of those might be. And as a reminder, these will require additional resources to operate. So I'm gonna start off with, you know, the Route 66, 67 and Route 12. And so the 
first piece of this is that, and this is going to be a little bit wonky, and so I apologize, is to try to shorten the alignments of 66 and 67 so that they can be made consistently in one hour with a one in a round trip. And, you know, why is this important? It's because if we get consistent connections in downtown Eugene at Eugene Station, it means connections from other routes will be easier to make on a consistent basis. And, you know, so this is possible right now during weekends and during non-peak times, but when traffic congestion gets uh, more intense, it is not possible to, for a 66 or 67 trip to make a round trip along its uh, alignment within an hour. So we looked at opportunities to streamline this route. And two of those you know, streamline opportunities was to, rem you know, to remove service from the existing VRC stop, the Valley River Center stop, from the backside of the mall, to look at what are some of the opportunities to do that you know, closer to the north side of the mall where some of the travel time to that, uh, you know, that's a station is no longer, you know, as time prohibitive. Uh, the VRC stop is, you know, there's very good ridership at that location. So it's just a matter of looking where can we place a similar high quality facility that does not require as much time to serve. One of the second opportunities is to, right, currently the Route 66 and 67 travel to Shadowview. They go off of Coburg, south of Crescent, to serve Shadowview, to serve the Winco, as well as the Costco stops, uh, and provide a connection to Route 12. And as you know, if we were to look at shortening this route, it's to operate on Coburg Road all the way up to Crescent and no longer operate on Crescent. Uh, or, you know, or on shadow view. We'd be looking at making an adjustment and extending Route 12 so that Route 12 would have a connection with Coburg Road as well as the Winco uh, and the Costco directly so that connections between 66 and 67 and Route 12 would continue to be made. But, you know, we'd be able to look at operating Route 66 and 67 in a more timely manner. We'd also be looking at recognize by recognizing some of the uh, ridership potential here is to expand the frequency of Route 66 and 67 to operate every 20 minutes during those highest demand times. One of the other elements, long-term elements, and again, this would require additional resources, is you know, recognizing that some of the travel patterns have changed within the region. And one of the things we saw was like that there was no connection from some of the northwest areas of Eugene to each other without having to go almost all the way into downtown Eugene and back. It's one of the things that we heard as a part of our outreach. It's one of the things that we saw during some of our travel pattern analysis. And it's one of the things some of the past planning efforts have identified as a potential need as well. So one of the opportunities that we saw was to extend service from, you know, for, in this, this case, it's Route 40 from Barger Road in the Winco area all the way out to Santa Clara Station. This provides east-west connectivity where there is none right now. It would serve some of the higher density housing that is being built off and constructed off of Maxwell Road. It will also provide school access to a high school and middle school and you know, provide connections to some of the, the neighborhoods along Echo Hollow, as well as Elmira, to some of the commercial activity, you know, the, the Fred Meyer and such around you know, um, on River Road. So this is a new connection that we feel will add regional connectivity and local connectivity and provide additional destinations on Route 40 and open new markets for Route 40 to areas that have limited service right now. One of the other areas that we'd be looking at uh, making a route adjustments to serve new growth is Route 13. Currently, Route 13 ends about a quarter mile away from a Walmart, which is a, a, a nice, it's a good ridership stop right now, but folks are having to walk. They're leaving their cart at the stop. That's a quarter mile away. And so we'd be looking at making an adjustment to this route to extend it 
you know, off on Olympic all the way to 28th and go north to Marcola, where Marcola Meadows is redeveloping. High density housing is coming in that area. And we'd like to see what we can do to by with the extension of Route 13 to provide a direct connection between downtown Eugene and this high, you know, this high density growth while also providing a better connection to Walmart. One of the other things we'd be looking at doing is improving the frequency of this route to every 15 minutes throughout the day on a weekday. Those are some of the route adjustments we looked at. And you know, so I wanted to briefly touch upon, there's a series of frequency improvements that were touched upon earlier uh, as a part of this presentation, but I also want to talk about where we are as a part of the process, the system review process. When we've gone out and we've surveyed riders, we've looked on community outreach, we've taken a look at what are the strengths and opportunities for the existing service. And we designed a series of, I wanna say operator constrained, shorter term recommendations, as well as you know a roadmap for how do we expand service when those operators and resources become available. We want to hear from you now of are some of the priorities that you see listed here, are they, are they the right ones? And so we're, we've, we've held a series of focus groups, open houses. Uh, we've gone, you know, have had pop-up meetings where we've talked to folks and potential and existing customers about, does this work for you? And so we're still in that community outreach phase right now as we try to see what people respond well to and what people do not. And ultimately, we're going to take that community feedback over the summer and develop a series of final improvement uh, recommendations uh, for implementation in 2025 and beyond. So we want your feedback, and there's multiple different ways we can look at doing this. Uh, check out the, uh, the project website, ltdsystemreview.org. Uh, there, if you look, you know, part of, you know, through there, you'll see a share your thoughts on, you know, and that it's a click, it's a link to an existing survey that outlines all of the recommendations and gives you the opportunity to talk about, provide comments on a route by route level, as well as as a total system level in terms of what did you like, what you did you did not like. Uh, the link is also, you know, the, the longer link is surveymonkey.com backslash R backslash capital N, capital N, seven, capital Y, eight, capital K, capital X. And last, a last option is to provide email feedback to systemreview at ltd.org. That concludes the formal presentation. And we're here to answer any questions, comments that you have. Again, please use the Q&A function as part of Zoom, and we'll do our best to answer those questions. Thank you so much. We appreciate your attention and look forward to hearing what you have to say and your thoughts about these concepts. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Appreciate it. Uh, just checking in, do we have any questions from the audience? Doesn't look like it. Uh, just a reminder, there's another open house this evening at six o'clock. Uh, we are again looking for feedback at ltdsystemreview.org, the survey, and also email at systemreview at ltd.org. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we will hopefully hear from you soon.